Hello and welcome to Tharik is still learning how to play more time City of the Damned. Why are we still doing this? Shouldn't we be doing the campaign by now? And well, if that doesn't answer your questions, we're still doing tutorials. We have reached the last four hideout management tutorials, so I think we should get right into it and we'll start with the skirmish mode. So, first thing is join a game. The skirmish screen lets you create or join custom matches against other players or AI controlled opponents. This screen allows you to browse and join games that are awaiting other players to start. The list shows you the game type, the map that has been chosen and the warband rank and rating of the game host. Keep in mind this information can be changed even after the lobby is started so make sure to talk to your opponent before starting. Okay, so this is about the actual multiplayer part, or skirmish games, because you can also play against the AI. We can also create a game. In order to host a game, press the Create Game button. This game can be either public, anyone can join, friends only, only players on your friends list can join, private, only players you invite can join, or offline, you play solo against an AI. The name and the game type must also be specified here before initializing the game lobby. These options cannot be changed, changed once the game is created. Exhibition or contest. There are two types of games in skirmish modes. In skirmish mode. The first one is exhibition. These games yield neither rewards nor consequences. Warriors cannot gain permanent injuries when falling out of action, but any word stones or items gathered will not be kept either. So you, it's like uh, you take a snapshot of your warband and play a game without any consequences, so just for the fun of it. And the second one is contest which is just like regular missions, all rules apply here. Warriors who fall out of action during the fight may suffer from permanent injuries, items gathered or lost will be permanent and you will receive rewards for completing objectives. Okay, so it looks like we can, in theory, create a online only warband to play these contest uh, games. At least that's what I think we can do. <laughs> we'll have to find out sooner or later. Next is the Skirmish Lobby. After joining or creating a game, you will find yourself in the lobby. Here, several game options can be changed. Opponent. Play either against a CPU or another player. Backtracking. Adjust the amount of movement points that can be backtracked. Okay, so we could make uh, it more difficult or we would have to stick with our choices from the get-go, apparently. Turn timer. Adjust the amount of time players have to perform all actions for a single warrior. Map selection and time of day. Decide on which map you would like to play and apparently at what time on the map. So day, night or stuff like that. Gameplay. Adds an extra layer of gameplay based on the selected map. This is only available for unique maps. I'm assuming it's stuff like... Um... Well, I don't know, really. <laughs> I was trying to think of something, something, but couldn't, so we'll move on. Deployment. Decide where and how each warband will begin the match. Winning conditions. Adds extra objectives required to win the match. Okay, so we can adjust the winning conditions, which is, sounds interesting as well. Okay, that's easy enough. Get ready. When you join a game, make sure to push the ready button so the host can start the game. Keep in mind you can always talk with the host about changing the game options before readying yourselves. yourself. And last but not least, community. A great way to find games and tournaments is to join one of the player communities, for example the Gentlemen of More Time on Steam. This will greatly increase the ease of finding a multiplayer game that suits the options you are looking for. Okay, so they're putting a focus on community here, which is uh, admirable, I think. They encourage you to actively seek out a community and not just try and play for yourself or only through random lobby games. 
So I think that's a nice approach and a good approach uh, also. So let's keep moving on to the shop. The shop offers equipment for your warriors at a price. Well, I wouldn't assume that it would have been free. Inventory is limited, however, and the main source of new equipment remains to scavenge the ruins of Mordheim and to loot enemies defeated in battle. So we can either buy equipment or loot enemies or scavenge for loot. Item availability. The list on the right side of the screen displays, uh, displays items available for sale along with the buying price and number available. Selecting an item will display more information at the bottom center of the screen. Buying an item will place it in your warband inventory. Okay. Inventory. Your warband inventory is also viewable from the shop and lets you browse all items not currently equipped by your warriors. These items can be sold for half the, of their worth. Selling items you cannot use can be a good source of income. So I'm assuming there are special weapons that can only be used by uh, some warbands. So selling them wouldn't be a big loss. Market event. Special events will often occur at the market. These events can have various effects on the market from sales to robberies. The current event and its effect is visible at the top left of the screen. Below this, the number of days remaining before the next event occurs is displayed. Some market events will influence the market rotation in positive or negative ways. Okay, so in this example, it's a wandering merchant that has brought a rare diagram to sell. Okay. Sounds interesting, but also a bit random. And uh, the last uh, one in the shop tutorial is the market rotation. Each mark tag will bring a new market rotation. Items may be added or removed from the shop inventory uh, from the shop inventory during the rotation. If you really want an item, it could be wise to buy it before the next mark tag, as it may no longer be available soon. Finally, you can find a list of items that had arrived with the latest event. This list cannot be interacted with. Okay, so that's the shop tutorial. Next up is the veteran system. The veteran system is a way to track your journey and achievements in the City of the Damned. These achievements are measured across all warbands you have played on your accounts. The progression and veteran ranks will never be reset, uh, reset or lost. Task progression. On the right side of the screen is a list of tasks that can be completed to gain experience and increase your veteran rank. Each time a task is completed, a message will appear at the top of the screen, no matter where you are in the game, to let you know. Upon gaining a new veteran rank, you will also receive certain bonuses and perks. These are detailed on the left side of the screen. And veteran skills. Every time you gain a rank between 0 and 10, you can, will also gain a veteran skill point. These points can be spent in the veteran skills tab to the right to the right to gain extra benefits for your warband. Plan carefully, as these skills cannot be refunded once selected. Veteran skill points are safe per warband. If you start a new warband, all of your points can be used to purchase a different set of skills. Okay, so the longer we play, the easier a new start should be, because we will already be starting with veteran points. So that's something we will have to keep in mind if we ever start a second warband at some point. And last but not least, a tutorial about the campaign and time system. And that's what I'm really interested in right now. So, available missions. The tokens on this map of more time represent possible mission locations. Highlighting a mission token will also display a rough estimate of the amount of wordstones and search points available in the area, as well as the relative strength of any opposition you may encounter. The token type represents the different optional objectives for the mission. Okay, so we've got here, for example, poor wordstone, poor search points, it's normal difficulty and 
I'm guessing the optional objective is called Crush Their Will. I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure we will find out. Scouts. If you are not satisfied with the available missions, you can always hire scouts to seek out new potential mission locations. You may only hire a limited amount of scouts each day at increasing cost. Sounds reasonable, I think. Next day. Only one mission can be undertaken per day. Once you have completed a mission, win or lose, you must select the next day option from the main hideout menu in order to prepare for a new mission. Be sure to take care of all your business, paying upkeep and treatments, selling wordstones, etc. before advancing to the next day. Daily Report. Every day you will receive a summary of events called the Daily Report. It will keep you up to date on all news concerning your warband and faction, such as reminders for shipments due, upkeep and treatment to pay, etc. Upcoming events. So we've got events here as well, apparently. On the campaign menu, there's a list of events for the upcoming days. This also serves as a long-term reminder of important dates. Okay, so there are apparently uh, set dates when we can hire new members for our warbands. Ah, okay, so we also get reminded when the market rotation is changing and stuff like that. So let's get to the last page. Unique missions. As you spend more time adventuring and more time, your faction leader will sometimes have a special request for you. These unique missions will appear on the campaign map as, as a special token. There are no time restrictions for completing these missions, and only one will be requested at a time. Okay. So... I'm saying so very... Uh, a lot, apparently. <laughs> We have finally finished all of the tutorials, took us long enough, so in the next video we will finally create our first warband and I think play our first mission as well. So as always I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new or maybe not, who knows. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video Leave me a like or a comment, and if you want to hear more of me and see me play more time City of the Damned and fail at it or learn to get better at it, just subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you tune in next time. Bye!